Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for coming along to our session this morning. I'm going to start right on time, even though I know that we will have a few more people joining the session, just because we are keeping us to 30 minutes. We have a couple of different key ideas we want to get through and share some data, some really interesting insights. And so what I'll do is I'll go through the slides. I'll present the different ideas and things that we have from our most recent study on mobile sports betting. And uh, the data I'm taking is mostly from the UK market, but we'll also have some examples from other places around the world. And then what we will do is at the end of the session, if people have questions, we'll be able to open up the floor. You can type into the chat box and send over any questions that you might have, and I will be able to answer those questions. So without further ado, my name is Jared Farrell. I work in the product department in Global Reviews, and I look at different territories around the world. So I look after a number of clients in Canada and in, in North America, in the UK, Ireland and other places in Europe, and then also down in Australia. So some of the examples that I'm going to be showing you is from those travels to those different places around the world in terms of what's happening in sports betting uh, best practice worldwide. So moving on. Some of the clients who we work with, I thought would be interesting to share just the breadth of industries that we work in, I think is probably the most important element here on this slide. We work with lots of clients in lots of different industries. We work in a bespoke manner, so solving very specific problems and uh, helping clients to create breakthrough creative ideas to move the needles that they need to move in terms of improving experience or maybe commercial metrics. And we work in very specific industries as well. So sports betting is obviously one of those, energy, higher learning, anywhere where there is a real e-commerce element from doorstep of website all the way through to application and final purchase uh, intent being completed. So um, sports betting, obviously, we're talking about the discover piece as well, where we're talking about people going on and actually trying to find a provider who will meet their needs. And so one of the things I'm going to be talking about here is an explorative based task where we ask people to go find a sports betting provider who they would place a bet with for a very specific event. We then take them through to an actual website and we split up our sample in this instance of 150 active sports bettors and we say, okay, we would now like a certain proportion of you to go to, let's say, for example, the William Hill site. And then we ask them to complete a number of mission-based tasks on the William Hill site. I'm going to talk about the actual methodology in a little bit more detail as I move through this particular session. But at this point, I really wanted to introduce the concept that the product that we're going to be discussing today, Fruition, which is an acquisition-based product, really looks at the marketplace in terms of the pathway that a prospective better is taking when they're coming to exploring, considering their options in terms of the different types of events that they're looking to place a bet on, what the odds are with those different types of uh, providers, and how easy it is for them to find the actual event and, uh, and to match their needs. All the way through then to actually placing bets on the betting slip, maybe adding ACAs and, uh, and other more sophisticated or more uh, detailed type of transactions when it comes to maybe filtering or playing with the bet options that are available to them. So the first thing we're going to talk about is Discover. We're going to talk about how are people actually finding sports betting providers when we take them through an explorative based task. And that task is imagine that you want to place an online bet on sport, horse racing, football. Please spend up to eight minutes online researching different websites to find out which companies are available and which sites might place a sports bet with. So for this particular part of the study, what we are doing is we are inviting 150 active regular sports bettors into an online environment and we're asking them to complete this task and then we are recording everything that they're doing so that we can see where they're going, the keywords that they're using and the sequential pathway. So the idea being if they're going from, let's say, a William Hill site to a Ladbrook site or a Carl site to a Skybet site. And how we do this and why we do it this way is we essentially work with market research panel providers, the largest ones in the world. So for those of you on the call from um, with market research background, of which I know there are a few, you'll be familiar with the research now and the Survey Sampling International and the fact that they have merged and now have a panel of 11 million worldwide. We also work with pan bespoke panel providers in individual countries too. So we would work with panel base in the UK, which I'm sure of you, many of you would be familiar with as well. 
And so what we're doing is we're asking these people to complete this piece of research on their own device in their own natural environment. And, um, and essentially it's an appointment based piece of research. So they will complete the research in one sitting. We do have customer journey products, which look at multiple device usage across a longer period of time, which is more ethnographic in nature. But essentially what we're here to do today is to talk about acquisition. When it comes to uh, a person trying to find a sports betting provider that meets their needs, like for like, how are you performing in comparison to your competitors in terms of attracting? So that's meeting the person at the right time in the right place with the right message, and then also actually driving them through to your assets and customer pathway and then converting. So that's really then down to the actual finding live events or adding things to the betting slip. So they're the key components with regards to discover and the kind of things that we're going to be measuring. But to get right into the detail then, and I'm going to be using live data to demonstrate some of the things that we do with the product, but then also to share some insights of some of the things that we're finding in the marketplace. So I'm going to start off with Ladbrokes. We're going to be talking about Ladbrokes. We're going to be talking about 888, and we're also going to be talking about Skybet. And then I've got examples from Titan, Crown Bet, Mr. Green, uh, Bet Victor, Bet 365, lots of examples from lots of places and lots of brands. So starting off with Ladbrokes, unprompted brand awareness. So uh, of the top five sport breasted betting brands that you can think of, unaided, um, who comes to top of mind? And so we have Ladbrokes coming in at unprompted brand awareness of 59%. We then ask people, okay, from that unprompted brand awareness, who would you choose at this point as being the provider that you would go with for sports betting? And so we have 12% coming through in initial preference. We then give them this discover task and we say, okay, we would now like you to go online and to find a sports betting provider for this particular event and spend eight minutes doing that task and then come back and complete some more questions. And so we have a proportion of people who actually visit the website itself. And then once they've completed the task of going online, we bring them back into the study and we say, okay, now having informed yourself of the options that are available, that will include promotional offers for potential new member sign up, all the way through to whether it be weekend boosters or, or various different things in terms of attracting people. We then say, okay, who would you now consider in terms of shortlisting or repertoire? So a number of brands that you would put on a, on a bucket list in terms of one that you would potentially go with. And so we're seeing that Ladbrokes are coming in at 48% for shortlisting. And then we would say, okay, from that final, from that shortlist, who's that one final preference provider? So exclusive options, shortlist is a multiple select and a final preference is a single select. And so we can see from the 48% who chose Ladbrokes, 14% are going on to choose uh, Ladbrokes a final preference. So just to be really clear on this one because we did get this question all the time is that 14% is representative of the full 150 people. The 48% is representative of the full 150, all the way up the visited is 150, initial preferences is 150 and the recall is 150. And so I'm not going to read through the slide bills, but they basically, if you want to get the pack afterwards and um, just get in touch, there's some contact details at the end of the session and we can, uh, and the pack will explain what the different um, terminology is in terms of the different scores which are being called out. So there's something interesting really then when I start to look at Ladbrokes performance in comparison to other brands who are measured in the same study. So if you remember, this is open-ended, it's passive, it's unaided in terms of the task. And so what we can see is in terms of brand recollection through to initial preference, and then we have task, which is the black line in the middle, then shortlisting and final preference, William Hill are starting off in first place and ending in first place. So they have a bit of a drop in terms of shortlisting, but proportionally people are shortlisting multiple providers because in this industry, people have more than one account generally. Um, and so William Hill are coming back up in terms of the highest proportional weight in ranking when it comes to final preference. But if we look at Ladbrokes, what's interesting here is we can see that Ladbrokes are in second place in terms of brand recollection. So great brand awareness there and top of mind awareness, but it's dropping right down to fifth place when we look at final preference. And if we look at Carl, which is interesting because obviously these brands are now part of the same family, we can see Carl uh, coming in from fifth, landing in sixth, just behind Ladbrokes. So the grouping of those two brands together. But I wanted to talk about 888 as well. And so we can see 888 are in ninth place coming up to seventh place. So that's a great achievement because they're growing, which means that they are increasing the number of people who are choosing them over and above the number of people who could think of them before they went online to actually do any research at all. So that means that they're, 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 they're 
the marketing, digital marketing strategy is having an impact and is attracting and acquiring customers um, that didn't think of them before. So we want to know what are the numbers behind what's driving each one of these different components. So we're looking at the same metrics again here. We've got recall, initial preference, shortlist, and final preference. And I really want to drill into this, what's going on between Ladbrokes and 888. So we, we said 59% for Ladbrokes and unprompted brand awareness down to 14% for final preference. Whereas if I look at the 888 example, I've got 2% at initial preference going up to 6% in terms of final preference. So there's that's where the incremental increase is happening that we saw on the previous slide. And I want to know why. I want to drill into what is it that 888 are doing in the digital pathway, which is actually prompting people to actually choose them. And so this is a short webinar. And so we will share some insights. And obviously, there's lots more data there's a massive this is an iceberg there's lots more data that we're not going to be sharing in this particular webinar and so if there's anything that you have further questions on please either reach out at the end of the webinar or you can get in touch so in terms of those who shortlisted you but actually you lost they went and chose somebody else how are the different brands performing in terms of what we call the lost opportunity score and so we can see the 48 percent of those who are shortlisting Ladbrokes going off and choosing others and Skybet doing quite well here at the 38%. If I look at what we call the shortlisting movement, so this is a sand key chart where we can see of those who shortlisted on the left, where are they actually going in terms of final preference on the right? We can see interesting things happening in terms of the correlation and how different peoples are moving. So while William Hill have a lost opportunity score of 66% overall, Carl and Ladbrokes are losing betters to William Hill and William Hill are losing betters to Paddy Power. So this gives us an indication of where people are going in terms of from that shortlist to final preference and uh, the movement of traffic or I suppose um, market share uh, when it comes to making one final exclusive decision. So we talked about the initial preference concept, which is pre-research, pre-online task. And we talk about the final preference concept, which is I am now fully loaded in terms of having had a look online of the options that are available to me. And so how many of those who initially preferred a particular brand go on to actually change their mind and go to somebody else? And so for Ladbrokes, I can see 12% actually changed their mind in comparison to Bet365, where 44% changed their mind. So what that is telling me is that Ladbrokes are retaining a lot of people who think of them initially when they come online and actually go on and explore their options. So Ladbrook fans seem to be very loyal. What that also means then is that Ladbrooks are then not achieving as well as others when it comes to acquisition in the actual digital marketplace. And there's a reliance more on the loyalty of current customers. So what potentially could be happening that's actually causing this to happen? At the final preference question, we ask, what are the reasons why you chose this brand at final preference? So some of the things that are important, the second most important, the website is easy to understand and use. And then underneath that, things I'm calling out, which are beyond just the relationship, that the offers were easy to understand, the website was fast to load, and the website was visually appealing. So as I drill down into what is it maybe that 888 are doing, now this is an example because obviously with SERPs, with search engine and search engine results, there's lots of variables which dictate what the actual search result will be. But from an indicative point of view, we can have a look at the different types of competitive strategies which are being used by the different brands to attract people. We can definitely see that there's something going on at this level with regards to 888 and Ladbrokes. So when we look at the search result for 888 Sport on their own brand term, we can see that they're offering four different pathways below the actual search result descriptor. And those four different pathways, one of them is the existing members login. And then they have a number of different betting elements or betting options to different types of sports. If I then go through from this particular type of this is a paid ad, obviously, if I go through this particular marketing pathway, it brings me to the landing page for this promotion and very clearly points out what the, you know, the promotion is. It links up to the actual ad. And at the bottom of that page, I've got navigational components, which bring me back into other parts of the website. But what is really interesting is how they're actually revealing or concealing the terms and conditions that are part of this actual special offer on the fold and only reveal it when I scroll down the page and the terms and conditions then become available to see.
So it reduces the, 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 percentage, the perception of clutter on the page and um, because it's not revealed. And then when I do reveal it, it's not massive. And then also I can go down towards the bottom of the page and I can see that there are also awards for the um, Bet3 for uh, 888. And they also tell me who they support in terms of the football teams. So there's interesting things going on there. But when I look at Ladbrokes, I can see that there are two CTAs that are available within the search result. And the things that they are calling out in terms of the content of the reasons why to choose Ladbrokes are actually quite different than the ones for 888. 888 are talking about things which are actually, we could call service or proposition based differentiators. So the idea being, you know, uh, cash out, free bet offers, uh, enhanced ACAs. Now, they're not differentiators in the sense that they stand out and they are unique. Most betting providers offer these things like live events, live streaming. But a lot of Ladbrokes is going to be around the heritage of the brand and a lot of it's around the trust and building trust. And these two CTAs that I called out before, one of them being casino. So this is one of the differences straight away. A second thing then that happens is when I actually look at the landing page for this particular type of promotion, I can see, uh, first of all, that the terms and conditions are much, much longer. And so the terms and conditions happen in two ways. Directly under bet here, we've got some of the terms and conditions. And then if I scroll further down the page, you can see on the right hand side what the full scroll looks like for this particular promotion. And there, uh, in terms of navigating back to the main website there are no navigational pathways which are able to enable me to get back so there's a difference there in terms of what's happening both in terms of how they're communicating the different top propositions for 888 versus Ladbrokes and then also when it actually comes to the landing page and we talked about the second most important thing for these people being that a website that is perceived easy to use a sense of clutter is definitely going to drive a perception of higher effort when it comes to interacting with a particular website so just digging a little bit deeper on this, so then when we compare 888, when we run the search a number of times, the same brand term, we can see that they're optimizing actually on the basis of the CTAs. And so they're playing around with different types of proposition elements, which is interesting. And the actual content descriptor doesn't change that much at all. So what stays perpetual all of the time is existing members log in. So that means that I've got a pathway straight through from the search result where I can log in straight away. And then other than that, they are playing with the different elements that are available in terms of whether it be odds, best odds guaranteed, so a promotional element, or whether it be a pathway to a particular type of bet. When I look at Ladbrokes, there isn't as much going on in terms of the optimization of the CTAs because there are only really two CTAs which are available. And uh, one of those, which is perpetual, is Casino. So we're really only playing with one. And so the optimization is actually occurring within the actual search result descriptor. And the search result descriptor itself stays in and around the area of the heritage and the legacy of the brand. And so one of the things I would call out is um, the world's leading sports betting and gaming company. So this is a very, very small area in terms of real estate. And I mean, my background is advertising and marketing before I got into market research. And it was always, uh, if you need to tell people that you were the world's largest and the best, then maybe, you know, that they should know that already in terms of the question is, is that the most appropriate place to be putting that kind of content for that kind of real estate? And really, if we're using this as an acquisition based part of the journey, should we really be calling out the things that we think that people are more interested at this stage of the journey in terms of the propositions which would drive them to actually choose one provider over another? So that's a very last piece, just in terms of this discover piece, because we've only 11 minutes left on this particular uh, webinar. Looking again at why, what led me to actually have a think about 888 in this particular way. When we look at those who shortlisted 888 against the average, we can see that they are much more likely to state that 888 have good offers. And so this then leads us down the road of actually trying to understand what it is 888 are doing and how they're communicating those offers. In our study in sports betting, we can see that there are a greater number of people on in each iterative wave that are moving to places like the aggregators when we give them the task to fight online. Top 10 betting sites remains the most popular of those aggregators, and we can see how 888 is actually performing within those aggregators as well, which is joining the dots in terms of the linking up the pathway from search keyword all the way through to actually then coming to uh, maybe an aggregator or direct brand site. The final thing I'll say about this is if this is something which is of interest to anybody who's on this call, 
what I've just shown you is a snapshot of something at a very basic level. In motor insurance, we're seeing some brands doing this at a much more sophisticated level um, and, and very successfully uh, competing very aggressively in terms of the strategies that they're using from both the promotional, but also in terms of competing against some competitors' brand terms and how they're driving traffic through and achieving very significant results when it comes to conversion figures. So if there's anybody who's any more interest in that particular part of this uh, webinar, let us know and we can show you some examples from uh, uh, one or two particular motor insurance companies that are doing that in Australia. So then finally, um, when I come through to this 888 homepage, I can see that how they're using their promotional messages, we can see that they're topping and tailing on the actual homepage itself, and then the look and feel and the clutter of the particular site itself is uh, pretty clean. So that was the discover component, and now I want to take you through consider and act. So consider and act is really where we start from the doorstep of the website, and we actually allocate people to different websites. The methodology changes here, and we start to look more like a usability study, a remote usability study than a quantitative research study with, a, with an explorer-based task. The tasks for this particular part of the journey we're rating the home page on a 10 point scale and a number of different criteria which are really important and then we're giving them very specific tasks so those tasks go from all live events in play through to finding a future event then actually adding a particular uh, bet to the bet slip and in this particular case in the example that's on screen it's uh, an ACA. So the things that we're measuring here and I'm not going to spend long on the methodology because you can get in touch with us to learn more but essentially what we're measuring here is the, the standard remote usability things in terms of how long did it take to complete the task, how satisfied, how successful and then also getting lots of verbatims in terms of uh, how did they feel that the experience went. We're also running a features and functions audit at the same time where we're looking at the different types of features and functions that you're providing, which actually help people as they move through the journey. So looking just at these brands, so I'm not representing all of the brands that I have, I'm just representing key brands because it follows on from the story that we had previously. I want to call out the Sky Better performing the best across the benchmark in terms of com people completing all of these different tasks and us measuring the features and functions. And so this is an overall top level KPI score. And so it's interesting to see Skybet coming in 67, Ladbrokes coming in at 64. When I drill down to one specific area of all of the areas that we measure, and so in this particular instance, it's looking for a specific event in the future. And so it's a horse to win a race and a highlighted area in the bottom right hand corner of the chart. I can see that 62% of those comp completing the task encountered problems on the Skybet journey. So while Skybet overall are doing well as the top leader in terms of the performance on the benchmark, what I can actually see that there are still people who are encountering problems. I drill down a little bit further. One of the questions that we ask after every task is, if you're looking for a new sports betting provider and thinking the experience of finding the odds for a specific bet from a provider, which would the following would be your most likely action and why? At the bottom of that, I've got, I would abandon. At the top of that, I've got, I would choose my provider. And so I can see that the encountered problem score that we talked about on a previous slide is having an impact in the conversion and the likelihood to choose this provider because we've got 15% saying that they would abandon and 25 and 10% saying that the experience was poor so that gives me 25% of people who are dissatisfied with the experience. When I drill down into what is the experience and what is causing the problem I can see that it's really around navigation and actually we have the punters or the betters themselves are actually saying on the right hand side took too long a search for horses or races would help. So that's really interesting with these guys, their expectation is search. But when we drill into it, we can see that there are only a few of the brands that I have listed in terms of the benchmark, the only one who's providing search is uh, William Hill for a future event. But there are others, 888 are providing it and um, Titan Bet are providing it. And the punters themselves or the betters themselves have particular uh, expectations around the experience. So I'm gonna give four, four, qui four quick tips in terms of helping users to find events uh, into the future, just from a navigational and a signpost point of view. Some of these will be obvious. Some of you will already have all of these implemented and, um, and then with this, some of them you won't. So the first one really is this idea around labeling. And so for those who are probably less familiar with sports betting, and maybe are not doing it on a much more regular basis, labeling will definitely help them in terms of matching uh, options clearly. So we can see examples here from William Hill, 888, Paddy Power and Skybet around how we're using labeling clearly 
and 888 interesting doing in-field labeling against the actual odds for people to know exactly what the labels are against uh, the different types of options which are being provided. So it's a simple one, but it's uh, labeling, being clear and making it uh, very clean and obvious is really important. A second one then is icons and labeling together. So um, an example is the hamburger menu. Still, we'll see menu, Skybet, for example, William Hill, for example, don't have menu underneath the hamburger menu. And for regular betters, I mean, obviously, who are coming in all the time, that would be, uh, they'll know that that's the key pathway. But best practice is definitely that there is labeling along with icon helps speed up the process. And so on the bottom right hand corner, we have some uh, call outs from Jacob Nielsen and the Nielsen Norman group in terms of icons need a text label. And so as you move from one sports betting provider to another, you can see that there's a non-standard usage of particular type of icons. And so the user has to learn the icon on your site because it may be different to the icon on somebody else's site. And that's why labeling actually helps even more. Icons also need to be large. So an example on the left-hand side, BetStars, their icons are small. And then some examples from some of the others in terms of making those icons big, fat fingers and the pixel width when you're on a mobile device. Again, it seems obvious. There are, I, but also we have product managers who are trying to squeeze as much into the screen as possible. Um, it's really important to make sure that uh, the icons are large enough for accurate navigation. Enable users to compare more easily their options. So as they're actually on the bet results page, that idea of being able to drill down into lots of different types of options which are available within that bet, and then again, labeling very well. So I'm looking at a couple of different examples here. So we've got 888, Skybet and Paddy Power in terms of both teams to score, yes, no, they're drop downs. they're using drop downs so that I can compare bot betting options together. Again, another tip. Then bet search. So for this particular task, we saw 72% were successful in finding the odds at William Hill, and they were the most satisfied of all of the people who were completing the task. 30% of the users actually used search to find the right horse. And so what we can see here is that William Hill are searching for future event, but then they're actually allowing me to go direct to actually bet from the search results. So the idea is that it's much faster and uh, it, it makes the experience easier for me. If we look at 888, they're doing predictive search. They put more real estate on the home page when it comes to actually what's uh, available, as in there's a big search button here in comparison to William Hill, who used to have it in the footer and have moved it, and it's a small icon. Um, and then what they're also doing in 888 is they're showing me related searches and they're showing me recent searches. And then again, the results are showing me the odds, and then I can bet directly from here. One of the interesting things as well, what 888 are doing in comparison to say Unibet who are using a similar system is 888 are also putting in some promotional advertising within the actual search result as well, which Unibet are not doing. So I'm coming very close to the end. <coughs> Excuse me. Then Titan Bet. So they have again placed a search front and center on the home page. And then what they're doing well is they are uh, the error correction in terms of if I don't fill, finish the word or if I don't complete the word correctly, they're actually, their objection handling is very good, uh, clearly calling out that there are no results. And, um, and then also search is placed front and center, so it encourages me to actually use it. And then finally, looking at crown bet. And so in this instance, we're putting wall in as what we're looking for a search criteria. We've got predictive search, which was also what Titan were doing on a previous slide, but then they're offering filters. And so those filters allow me to filter the results. I mean, we see this in higher learning where you get a lot of different types of results coming back as people are looking for courses and there could be thousands of courses. And so the idea being that the filters then allow me to become a little bit more sophisticated in terms of, in terms of my search results. And then again, they're actually um, doing lots of good stuff in terms of objection handling. And then if I don't have the answer, as in if they, they can't provide the answer from the search, they're providing the pathway to the next step, which is live chat or to call. And then my final slide. This is really around the concept of, okay, I've come to the site and now actually, you know what, I'm not entirely sure what I want to bet for, uh, but I want something which is going to be a little bit more based on my interest. And so, for example, Mr. Green has a tool which allows you to select a favorite type of horse on a course and then shows the matching horses and available bets. Bet Victor allows me to uh, base it on maybe a star rating or the trainer that's in form or a jockey that's in form and then gives me results based on that. And then Betfair have also a range of filters that allow me to produce a bet. So <clears throat> the idea of a match needs tool, the idea of a search functionality, the idea of navigation in terms of icons and labeling, it seems simple, but it's amazing there's, there's quite a few that 
aren't there yet. And then also just making sure, you know, that the labels are big and the icons are big enough. So taking through to the recommendations and the end of the webinar, consider the role of SEO and SEM results as they pertain to competitive acquisition strategy. Are you seeing the full picture? And so that is both, you know, the aggregator piece, but it's also what are you doing in terms of your results on keywords, bringing, uh, bringing back a, a keyword result in terms of description and the CTAs of where it's going to bring them next, and then actually the page that it brings them to. What more can you do to make that process more seamless? thinking about terms and conditions and clutter and, and, um, and pathways to other parts of the website. Betters want websites that are easy to use, which help them find key events and odds for those events. So tools to consider, icons, search tool, bet comparison options, and more advanced tools to match needs. Thank you very much for your time. Um, I know that there are people outside just Europe who are looking at this webinar as well. And so we've put in our contact details for anybody who's down in Australasia who would like to get in touch with either Tony or Darren. And then here in Europe, Neil and Matt would also be able to handle any of your questions and we would be delighted to hear from you. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pause for a second and um, go on mute. Just for anybody who has any questions, please just type them into the chat box. And, um, and then I'll come back in literally two seconds, finish the questions, and then we'll wrap up. So one, one question was two parts that came in there just with regards to multi-country studies and um, studies in other languages. And so yes is the answer. We've done many studies in the past in sports betting in terms of uh, different languages. So Spain, uh, Italy, uh, France, and so, and we do it in lots of other industries as well. So we're working with one of the large banks at the moment uh, at a global level, and we're currently looking at seven different countries and seven different uh, studies. So, I mean, translation services, all that kind of stuff, we're, we're very familiar with running them. And uh, as I said, we work with research now, Survey Sampling International, Toluna and local panel providers. So in terms of panels, as long as the uh, requirement that we're looking for and the sample isn't mad, then we should be able to be fully feasible for anything that's required. So thank you very much again for your time. And um, if you would like the pack, please reach out and we'd be able to share it. And otherwise, have a lovely Thursday and a great weekend. Thank you very much.